Hello and welcome to my Blender beginner bathroom architectural design, whatever you want to call it tutorial. This is part two. So check out part one on my channel if you somehow got to this video without actually looking at the first one. Anyway, this is the reference image we used. This is where we were in our previous video. This is where we get right now. As you may have noticed, this is for beginners. So if you don't know how to do this, hop along. Oh, and if you can already do this, then I, uh, you should probably stop procrastinating. Select your cube, add in a few subsurface divisions if you want to. Actually, no, that's literally your only choice. G, X, move it all the way over here. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to scale it in the X direction because it's supposed to be a bit like this, right? Control R and move it down. Now, don't touch the bottom. Just move it down over here a little bit. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this space over here and control plus and I'm going to scale it in. So just press S and scale it in. And then I'm also going to press I and just create an inset over here just to create this nice little smooth surface. I'm going to right click shade smooth. Our next step is to match this toilet seat as much as possible. So press G X and move it over here. And I think I'm going to play with the opacity a little bit so I can see better. So in this window, I'm going to come here a little bit and I'm going to try to make this a matte cap so I can see it easily. Yeah, that's nice. I'm going to select this and I'm going to just select the stop edge and move it down over here till I match. Well, this edge, this, this stop edge. But as you can see, it's not matching this area. I'm not supposed to be moving it. Well, I'm not, I can't actually move it in any of these directions. I'm not allowed to do that. What I am allowed to do is move it up a little bit and then scale it in. There we go. All right, so next step is to match this edge over here. Not any other edge. I'm not trying to match this one, just this edge. So like this back area, G, Y and move it in over here. All right. And finally, I'm going to make sure that the front bit is just aligning with this area. There we go. That's nice and easy. Now, all I should need is adding in another loop cut, moving it all the way up over here, selecting this inner bit and adding in another loop cut over here. I'm going to select this and move it forward actually i have to select this bit as well and then move it forward here we go now remember we can't move this bit in like any of these directions we have to either move it up or down and scale it but that's not really our concern right now our concern is to match this back edge and that's easily done by adding in a loop cut and sliding it back over here the next thing we need is all of these different cuts now remember don't model anything you don't see. So we don't really need to model what's inside this toilet seat right now. That's probably another video. So I'm going to press control R and move this loop cut up over here until it's at the bottom of this edge there. And then I'm going to add in another one over here. I'm going to move this one up. So double G to slide it over here. If you do G and Z, you'll end up deforming it. But if you press double G, or if you tap G twice, it'll slide along the edges. And I'm going to do the same up here, but instead I'm going to take a bit of artistic liberty over here and say, just do it over here instead of, well, up there. Because matching this perfectly would take a lot of trial and error. I would have to go back here, move it up, then, you know, I'll have to spend a lot of time. If you want to match it perfectly, then go for it. I'm going to select both of these things where the edges are supposed to be. And I'm going to press E to extrude it. And then I'm going to press S to scale it in. And I'm just going to scale it in. Well, not a lot, not anything like this. Just a little bit. Now, if you want to, you can press I and inset it. I'm, I canceled my inset, so I'm going to zoom in and show how much I'm insetting. So pressing I and just a tiny bit but before we say goodbye to this entire thing I am gonna just select this move it up a tiny bit 
just to make it so we'll yeah the, there's actually a cap there instead of it being super thin now finally for this back area i am going to shift s cursor to selected so my cursor is all the way over here and simply add in a cube i'm gonna bevel that cube and then i'm gonna do control 2 to add in two subsurface divisions i'm gonna get into edit mode scale it in g y move it back now i need to match this edge with this cube over here so just gonna scale x and match it over here well actually no i'm gonna reduce this distance there we go i'm gonna hide this just to see what's going on so it's just going into the wall i believe it's going into the wall let me make sure yes it is so just alt h to unhide it and then just s x to make it a bit bigger there we go and g z to move it just down a little bit now this is no one's concern whatever is going on over here i don't know the mechanics of it and frankly it doesn't matter so i don't care all right so the next thing is to make this thing over here now that is insanely simple i am just going to shift right click over here just to move the cursor here add in a cylinder get into edit view s scale it down until it's just around the edges select this top bit g z move it over here i'm gonna insert it press i to insert it and then e to take it back in just over here should be fine all right so something else that needs to be done is i am going to just delete this bottom face over here and you'll find out why later actually you'll only find out why if you don't delete it so gz move it up if you take a look over here there's this edge and i kind of want that to be part of the model instead of just you know trying to do that with textures so i'm going to move it down until it disappears and then move it just slightly back up and then press e move it down along the z-axis and then scale it out there we go so now i have this tiny little cute little edge over here now i am going to press ctrl 2 and it's going to look hideous so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a bevel modifier, move it up and change this to angle. Right click, shade smooth. Select this edge, well this face. Basically I'm selecting the central face over here. Pressing I to create an inset and there we go. The next thing I need to do is I need to create, well, a drain over here. All right, so I'm going to keep that face selected, pressing I, and just going to move it in over here to where the drain is supposed to be, and then pressing E to move it down. E and Z to move it down, obviously. And now we have a problem where we can see this table through, well, this area. That's really easy to solve as well. I'm just going to create a cylinder over here. I'm going to scale it in. And I'm going to keep it the size of this drain. I'm just a little bit bigger. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to come over here to these things and enable render. This camera icon. And I'm going to disable this in the render. So that way when I actually render the image, this uh, cylinder doesn't appear. So I'm going to call this boolean. And you're going to find out why I'm calling it boolean right now because I'm going to scale it along the z-axis and you can see what's happening. I'm going to scale it along the z-axis just like this. doesn't really matter how much you do it. Um, I'm going to select this tabletop and add in a boolean modifier. Select this cylinder right here and I'm going to hide the cylinder now. There we go. So now there's a hole in this tabletop. You can see the hole over here as well. But now we have another issue. We can see this bottom base over here. It's easy to solve. Select the bottom base, select the top and press Ctrl L and link the modifiers together. So now we have a hole, or well, we should have a hole throughout, except it's not really that far down. So if I move this further down, 
Now that hole is done, we need this piece. Uh, first of all, let me try and make sure that this is perfectly aligned, which it is not right now. Now I'm going to select these two edges. Actually, you don't really need to do that. Just and decrease this bevel limit over here to something, say, 0 0.002. Okay, so this is amazing and all, but it's messing with this bit, this place. So I'm just going to avoid doing this bevel and I'm going to do the bevel myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this area, control B, and I'm going to add in, say, three or four loop cuts. All right, that's nice. And then I'm going to control to this edge, sorry, this edge and this edge. Remember to deselect everything. Control B and don't overlap them, but just do it a little bit. I am going to increase this opacity a little bit so I can actually see what's going on. Now let's move on to this uh, faucet or, you know, wherever the water is coming from. So I'm going to select this bit and uh, I'm going to do origin to geometry. And if you don't have origin to geometry, you can come over here to object, set origin, origin to geometry. Shift S, cursor to selected. I'm going to add in another cylinder. I'm going to move it up, scale it down. I'm going to press 3 and I'm going to rotate it by 90. So move it here, move it up, scale it out. It's a bit too much. Pressing 1 to get into the front view. Move it here and move it up. So if this edge is matching it, then that means you did a good job. It was just pointing out that's the only reason that was going on. All right, so this is going to need a couple of uh, modifiers right now. And my favorite modifiers, to be honest, which are the bevel modifier and then control 2 to add in subsurface divisions. Right click, shade smooth, and come over here, turn on auto smoothing while you're at it. Uh, the offset for the bevel modifier should be around 0, 0.0. Well, it should be a really small number, to be honest. That's all that matters, to be honest. And change this to angle as well. Now, pressing this face, well, selecting this face, pressing I and insert over here. I'm going to press E and extrude it out up until the point where it stops being straight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just scale it in a little bit. And I believe it's actually tilted which is interesting to me. So this is easiest done with a side view. Now there are multiple ways to do it. You can use curves as well, but I am an incredibly lazy human being. So I'm gonna extrude and rotate. This is also when increasing the bevel angle is actually a good idea. So maybe make it around 60 or something. And finally, along the end, I'm gonna add in an inset and extrude it up just a tiny bit and scale it in a little bit as well and add in another inset. We don't really need to see whatever happens over there. We just need it to have a bit of thickness, just a tiny bit thickness. Honestly, we didn't even need to do this because you can't actually see what's happening over there anyway. Next thing is just this tiny bit over here and that's really easy. Just select this Shift D. So you duplicate it and press X, move it over here. Huh, it's not at the same level, which is interesting. G, Z, move it over here. Just move it out a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this ending face and control plus until I have selected all of these faces that I want to get rid of. So shift X and delete faces. Just going to select this. I need to take a look at what it looks like over here and it's around this much then it's extruded outward then it's extrude scale extrude y press f to add on a face press i to inset there we go and then there's this handle thing above it that is really easy to do all you really need to do is just select this vertex, shift S, cursor to select it. Now, if you don't have a vertex over here, uh, you'll probably have two vertices. So there's going to be one on either side of this in the middle. So just select both of them, shift S and cursor to select it. 
and that will still move the cursor to the middle of those two vertices. Uh, the reason you don't have vertices over there is probably gonna be this, since I'm using 32 vertices in my cylinder. Anyway, back to work. I'm gonna add in a cylinder while in edit view. I'm gonna scale it down. Keep scaling it down, keep scaling it down. And I am going to move it along the Y over here, scale it up a little bit, and select this top bit and move it up. Here we go. I'm gonna press I to inset, create this. I'm not gonna bother with this edge over here, and to be honest, uh, it's not really that hard to do. So, you know, an exercise for yourself. Just select a couple faces and do something with that. All right, so how is our scene looking? Let's add in these containers. We're gonna do the objects later, but for now, let's do the containers. So shift right click over here, add in a cylinder, move it in. Remember, uh, you're not supposed to move a simple, a single edge to match anything. You either move the whole object or you scale the whole object. Press this, I'll select that, press I to inset, and extrude that in. Next thing is this container that it's resting on. All right, so for this container over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this. And first I'm gonna try to match the container and then I believe this um, bowl itself, well, this jar, thingy, majiggy, whatever, needs to move. So I'm gonna get into edit view and get into top view. Well, top view, edit view, vertex select, select all of these vertices and just move them along the x-axis a little bit until I'm happy with their position. So this much is fine. And then I believe this needs to move. So I'm gonna try to match it. So press G, X over here, G and Y, G, X. So there we go. Y just a little bit yeah that's nice next up is I need to select all of these um, what's it called faces along this edge so the boundary at the top and move them down to this much and finally uh, this face at the end the end needs to just be at the base select this ball and I'm gonna just move it over here and it's gonna to need to be scaled down just a tad, just a little bit. Actually, it might need to be scaled down a bit more. Duplicate it along the x-axis, just move it over here. I'm gonna try to match it, but instead this time I'm gonna control plus and delete all of these. Select this, press F to create a face up there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try, actually let me first hide it and see what's going on. I'm gonna try and match this shape. So that's gonna need a couple of subsurface divisions, right leg, shade smooth. And let's just try to do the base first and select this base, press I to move it in, and then we can do the top. So what's going on over here is it is a wrong well, not long, but it is this area. Let's just move it all a little bit here. Here we go. And now what we need is a subsurface division. Not a subsurface division, sorry, a loop cut. That lets it follow that path. Press E to extrude it up. All right, so then it's I. And I believe this is also going to need a bevel modifier bevel and limit that by angle um let's select this move it up here all right now it's extruding up inset extrude inset extrude there we go and let's shade it all right, so it is auto smoothing already. Oh, the bevel needs to be really low. And I guess a, a higher angle wouldn't really hurt. Mm, do I want to go with a higher angle or do I want to create that shape myself? So GZ and then create over here another one. 
All right, so now that I'm actually editing this video, I realized that the sound quality is bad because I'm not talking to you people, I'm talking to myself. So that's gonna change in the next video. I'm actually gonna speak up and be louder. Also, while we're at it, what should I be doing next after this series is done? Do you want a bedroom series? Maybe something like a living room series or something? You know, whatever. Whatever you guys are interested in. Uh, also, you've managed to watch a lot of this, so you should probably subscribe considering you're still here. Really. Uh, also, leave me a comment down below.